Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So, in this episode, I'll be discussing the sixth movie to be released in the overall Scream franchise, the 2023 aptly titled Scream 6, as directed once again by Matt Bertinelli Alpin and Tyler Gillett, who return to their director's chairs after taking up the mantle, directing the last movie in the series, 2022's Scream following Wes Craven's sad passing in 2015, after he had directed all of the four previous movies in the series. This entry follows from the events of The Last, where the survivors of the latest Ghostface massacre to hit the sleepy suburb of Woodsboro, uh, Sam Carpenter, as played by Melissa Barrera, and her sister Tara, as played by Jenna Ortega, and their friends Mindy and Chad, as played by Jasmine Savoy-Brown and Mason Gooding respectively, have moved to New York to put the past behind them as Tara also attends Blackmore University. However, somebody is not quite finished with them yet, and soon they become the target of yet another raging maniac in a mask. Only this time they seem to be more determined and more ruthless than ever totally brazen and unrelenting. As terrifying as ever, Ghostface's pursuit knows no bounds, as this time they take the fight to the urban sprawl of the big city, a new playground to set out their macabre and twisted plan. Once again putting Sam, Tara and their friends right front and centre, right in the middle of the terror that unfolds. Together with some Scream alumni, Fierce reporter Gail Weathers, as played by Courtney Cox, and Kirby Reed, as played by Hayden Panettiere, now an FBI detective taking a specific interest in Ghostface cases, they must come face to face with the legacy left by the serial killers to have borne the mask throughout the years. So, here we are. Scream. Six movies in. By now, surely, this series is starting to show some of the same fatigue many horror franchises do, right? Especially given this series' most iconic and influential roots. The original Scream redefined the horror genre and examined the rules and tropes of many of the classic horror movies and franchises. Scream 2 took, a, took it one step further and took a magnifying glass to the Hollywood sequel. Scream 3, trilogies. Scream 4, remakes. 2022 Scream, requels. Such a thing. And so with Scream 6, we now have a requel sequel. A bit of a mouthful. Or as we establish in the film, we now have a bona fide franchise. I honestly did not know it took six movies to do that. Hmm. I've foolishly been calling it a franchise since the second instalment. Sorry, Mr. Ghostface. Now, I love the 2022 reboot immensely. Both Matt Bettinelli, I Alpin and Tyler Gillett did an amazing job at continuing Wes Craven's legacy and kind of reigniting my love for this franchise once more. And their newest attempt with Scream 6, well, it just takes what they'd kind of done for that first effort and amps it up tenfold. This movie, by far, tops any and all expectations I actually had for it. It took the series to a new setting. Okay, for the second time, but, but, for as much as I do love Woodsboro, you know, iconic, it proved that the franchise could kind of pull away from, from much of what we kind of come to expect from the series, whilst at the same time remaining tremendously nostalgic and self-reflectant in its own right. This doesn't feel quite bound by the same rules as the previous instalments, and as such, Ghostface appears and is much more ruthless, much more frantic and unpredictable. The kills are much more involved, savoured, some drawn out and certainly emotional. The way the movie kind of sets up each of its characters, even, even the minor ones, means that we kind of feel every cut being made and indeed some are actually quite gut-wrenching to watch. They did have me kind of squirming a little bit, there's definitely a kind of level of unrivaled brutality at play. This is slick, edgy and a distinctly dark twist on the franchise, yet still 
distinctively scream and hat. The new cast build on what had kind of been set up in their first outing and indeed continue to carry the franchise, proving that not only is there still life left in this franchise and still new angles to explore, but, but, that even as nostalgic as it would have, you know, have been, or that it is, the legacy cast are not all that essential to its continued success. As they, you know, they do make a point of very succinctly in the movie. Nobody's safe or above Ghost's face wrath, you know? Legacy or not. Now, I do love Neve Campbell um, in the series for sure, beyond. And the energy, charisma, the commitment she brought to the role of Sidney Prescott is second to none. That role is iconic within this franchise. But the transition away from the original characters feels right here. Yet, you know, their contribution and existence still continues to be respected. And I think, really, it does an amazing job at striking that balance. It somehow manages to kind of cram in as much retrospective ghost face nostalgia as is probably humanly possible, bringing together the franchise in a way that I never really kind of envisioned, without ever really kind of feeling too saturated as a result. The big reveal is, of course, a big part of these movies, Scream in particular. Now, and, and after that kind of very first big shock of that first movie, it's often one that really, that, that kind of underwhelms. Sadly, this entry <laughs> really not been very much different in that department. I do admit though, six movies in, where are you going to take it? What are you going to do? What will keep things fresh? I do admire the series for kind of keeping at least some line of continuity and keeping things kind of real, fairly grounded. We haven't yet headed off into space. You know, we haven't even, you know, even though we've headed off to New York, we're not just kind of trapped inside a tower block for the entire duration. We get to explore. Ghostface spreads the wings, you know. Um, but ultimately, the, the, the actual, you know, the actual killer and rationale falls a little flat. However, I think, that, you know, the, the kind of knew this, if you, if you like, if you kind of think, they kind of knew that they were kind of clutching at straws and never... Uh, and I think, really, it, it does actually stick the landing. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. It actually sticks the landing. Not with the killer, but with the actual ending. Now, I'm not going to give it away. Never, never for a Scream movie. But, to be honest, as the ending kind of draws, it's not about who the killer is here, but moreover how they and the survivors react and kind of play into that terror. There is one moment when the killer's kind of cleaning their knife towards the end which just speaks to their bravado, and I literally squealed with delight. I think by this point, Leslie, who had gone to see it with me, thought I was thought I was nuts. But for me, this really was that kind of movie, you know? Through and through. It was a delectable experience for all of that. I mean, to, to some extent, well, I think I said this in the, one of the first kind of reviews that I did for this franchise, but Ghostface obviously changes with every single um, instalment. Now, that's unique to some extent for the serial killers of, you know, the, the horror franchises. Most of them are the same, or iterations of, or whatever. This ghost face, if you like, is almost a character in themselves, even though they're played by different people. But it, it still is. Ghostface is. And that's the thing. It just is. And this film proves that. This film proves that it's more about Ghostface than the actual killers themselves. And I don't mind. I don't mind. At least this one kept me guessing. The last one I had down in the first five minutes. And I never wavered. This one did enough to throw us off the scent. Yet with enough kind of subtle clues, you know. But enough, you know, enough of them so that I couldn't actually place the killer at all. We were coming up with all sorts of theories. Long time since that's actually happened. It's also got a pretty vindictive streak um, about it, whilst also being quite darkly comic. As much as I was on the edge of my seat, I was actually chuckling away at times. Some of it was, you know, with the nostalgia, but such total entertainment on all levels, you know. There were some brilliant kind of throwbacks to earlier moments in the franchise. Sometimes, sometimes literally ripping the dialogue straight from their pages, but often, often with its own delectable twist on the outcome. 
Overall, a brilliantly considered continuation of the Scream franchise that, yes, whilst leaving Woodsboro behind in its rearview mirror, continues to bring the best elements that make this franchise such a treat for me. And then some. It's fast, it's ruthless, and totally hits a sincere balance between horror, suspense, gore, comedy, and character development. There's a kind of great bond that forms between the friends, and it's hard to not to really kind of start to develop an attachment to them as well, as there's a kind of real level of emotional involvement. Even for those with only really kind of minor, and sometimes often kind of fleeting parts, there's not just kind of cannon fodder here, you know? Considering this only kind of came out one year, one year following the last I Am In Total All. Usually by the sixth instalment, fatigue is starting to set in. But Alpin and Gillet go to kind of prove us otherwise here. Without resorting to tired old horror tropes with a kind of brilliantly placed setting and a fresh new feel. But then, but then, and I must admit, I am incredibly biased. I love this franchise and I, I absolutely love where Alpin and Gillet have taken it to date. You know, with this out in kind of topping their already brilliant 2022 revival. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you at Southwest Movie Talk. Definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.